Hey there, it is Tom Stern on behalf of Indie Structural Productions once again, and um, we are going to be doing a sort of painting tutorial on how to go from this into something completely different. And here is the end result that we're going to go for. Now, if there's a certain thing that you want answers to pretty much immediately and you don't want to hear me blabber on and go through the entire thing, just check the chapter markers down in the description and those will tell you the different parts of this entire process. So if you want to know more about what it's like to go from the first layers of paint to clear coat, or if you want to look at scuff sanding and stuff like that, then you can skip right on ahead to those parts of the video. That's completely fine with me. But if you want to watch the entire video, I do urge you to do so because I'm just going to be going through my entire like sort of method on how I approach these things. All right, so now we're at the next stage, which is doing clear coats. But before that, we need to uh, scuff sand this once more. The finish on it is actually pretty good already, straight from the spray can. And um, because this is gonna be satin, it's gonna be a little bit different to how I would approach doing gloss. I am gonna go over how I do gloss because as it happens to, B. At the same time, I'm finishing Johnny's base, which is gonna be glossy. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do both, or at least my versions of doing both. So first things first, now that we're at this stage, I'm not gonna go back to 600 anymore. I feel like that's gonna be a little bit too rough for this part because I don't wanna take away too much paint. I just want to kind of very gently take back the surface of it. So I'm gonna be using some 800. So once again, all the flat areas, flat surfaces, gonna be doing with a block. Wonder if you can see that. Let's lift that up a little bit more. And whenever doing stuff like this, having too much light is never a bad thing. So. Oop, hit the guitar there. And I am still going to avoid edges as much as possible because I don't want to break the edge. I'm gonna be building up enough clear coat to handle those later on in the process. But as it currently stands, I don't want to really break that. That would be a royal pain to try and fix at this stage. So yeah, this doesn't differ at all from doing the 600. Still not really using all that much pressure at all. I am just sanding enough so that I feel that it smooths out because I can still feel with the sandpaper that there's a little bit of grain or you know particles of the paint and I'm just smoothing those out. You can feel it and you can definitely hear it and that's basically all I'm doing. But the good thing is that in my case, my situation, I have managed to get a pretty even coat on here so I'm having to do very little work to get it nicely scuffed up. And there, the front is already done. I'm gonna do the back and the sides next, and then I'm gonna show you the neck because currently we have the fretboard edge also masked up. So I'm gonna take away some of the masking and we're gonna remask the fretboard so that we can get that under some clear coat as well. Now the fretboard edge has been masked up and we want that to get some clear coat on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take away, peel away the masking on the right board and we're gonna remask it up. Now this is where the pinstriping tape is really handy. So I can just peel away like so. There. Now, after taking off the masking tape, there is definitely gonna be an edge to the paint, and we're gonna address that with the scuff sanding. 
and basically we're just gonna bring that edge down a little bit so it's gonna feel smooth to the touch. But first, we need to mask off things that we don't want painted or uh, mask off things that we don't want clear coated and that's gonna be the top of the fretboard. So, once again, burnishing down and then using a sharp scalpel to clean up those edges like so. Now, masking up, masking up a fretboard is always a little bit tedious because you need to really make sure that nothing gets on your fretboard. So what I do is I mask up slowly and I burnish on the edge of the fretboard and along every fret. And I do this on both sides to ensure that I don't get any finish onto my fretboard. And burnishing along the fret means that I won't have any leaks along the fretboard either. Clear coat leaking through. I'll show you a little bit closer what I mean. All right, so taking a little bit of tape and first bringing it to the edge and then using my fingernail, I'm just running it along the side of the fret, like so. Then again, like so, burnishing down along the edge. Like so. It's a very straightforward process, really. Just need to do it carefully. All right, I'm gonna do the rest and we'll get back to this in a bit. This is literally gonna be the same process as with the paint, except now we're using Mastin 1 Satin Lacquer. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and aim for four coats in between 20 minutes to kind of build up a little bit more. But just very light coats and doing it the same way that we've done everything before, so. There's a little bit of dust on the surface. I'll get rid of that in the next sanding session. While it looks glossy now, it's just because it's wet. When it dries up, it will be a very nice satin finish. There. All right, that's the first layer done. We're gonna come back for the second layer very soon. Well, for you, it's gonna be instantaneous. For me, it's gonna take 20 minutes. Uh, there's two things that I forgot to do um, previously. One of them was open up the windows to get ventilation in here, so that's why I got a little bit of dust on there. And secondly, I forgot to do the front of the guitar. So, huh, here we go. So we'll do the second layer with what we have right now. And uh, I think we might have to leave it at two layers for now and uh, come back later to do more because I forgot to do some on the front. Or, I do some more on the front. We'll see. Uh-huh, that broke. That's not good. Seems like everything's failing on me today. It's not really reliable if it keeps spraying after you stop. So I'm gonna try and do the front. Let's see how far I get. Okay, it's just a little, little uh, odd feeling. Not exactly smooth. 
I might have to get a new one. Man, this is so hard to control. I don't know what happened to this nozzle, but it's broken now. I'm not gonna risk ruining the clears, so I'm gonna get some new stuff tomorrow and pick this up again later on. That's a damn shame. Okay, so. That um, spray can that I had, something was wrong with it and it didn't really come out quite the way I wanted. And now it looks like this is stuck. Oh, that's wonderful, great. Well, yes, this blows. Um, I had thought that this was dry already and I put it down on here. I should have put something in between, but it got stuck and now I have to get rid of it. But that doesn't matter, I had to get rid of it anyway. Um, something went wrong with the spray can and it wasn't giving me a nice even coat. You know, it's breaking and well, you know, that's all well and good in the sense that um, after a little bit of a discussion with Johnny, he actually wants more of a matte finish instead of a satin finish. So that's not the right one. So instead we're gonna go with some Mastin matte varnish. And basically the process is, for me at least, the process for the matte finish and the satin is pretty much the same. Um, so I'm gonna go through with showing you how to do that and then show you the gloss because there's two different ways of doing it. For the matte lacquer, um, I'm not, basically the finished product is what's gonna come off straight from the can. I'm not gonna do any sort of final sanding and that sort of thing. I'm gonna do the final sanding before I put the last coats of lacquer on there. And that's mainly for the sake of the fact that if I were to go and do all the wet sanding afterwards, I would have scratches, yes, but I'd also have to go to somewhat of a high grit, which was already give a sort of like sheen that is similar to this satin that we have right now. And we want full matte. So the best way to get that is to just go straight from the can. And um, it's a little bit difficult to do properly, but if you're careful and apply good coats evenly, and do good prep work. So do your wet sanding or your scuff sanding very well. Try and get it as flat as possible. You should be well in the clear. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Also because I need to fix up this. So I need to take out some 600 to get rid of all this stuff. Well, I mean, it peels off, but okay. Well, I'll be able to clean up all this probably with just a sponge because it seems to just be coming off by me scratching it off. That's good news. Yeah, I'm just gonna get all this gunk off first, and then I am, I'm gonna go with 800. I'm gonna do 800 grit. Same thing as I've done before, but just so I get a little bit of a flatter, sur flatter surface because I do have the covering that I want for the paint, and I'm not gonna be going through, so I can afford to go to 800. I might polish that up just ever so slightly with thousand grit paper just to get a very nice flat surface before I apply the matte varnish on there. But hey, I'm gonna do the 800 and we'll see where I am at that point, after that point. As for the glossy clear coat, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna do 600 grit to take this down, scuff sand it, and then we're gonna do the same sort of coats as before. That's not gonna change. The only difference with the gloss is what we do after we've gotten the final, final coats of uh, clear coat on there. So I'm only gonna go into that once we're at that stage with this build. But up until then, let's work on this, shall we? All right. All right. Instead, what is what I decided to do of, yes, I could go to 1000 grit, at this point, but I'm gonna be using some Merca Marlon to It's hard for me to say it in English because I have no idea, but Mirlon Total. So I guess Marlon Total. Um, this is 
I believe, the fine, which is supposed to be the equivalent of uh, 1,500. Sorry. This is supposed to be the equivalent of 1,500 grit sandpaper, so I'm just gonna use this to do up the surface real nice. It already looks pretty nice, but this should just give that final little uh, polish or flatten flatness to it. So let's do that. All right, so this is for y'all Americans out there. This is kind of like Scotch, Scotch bright, I think is what you call it. But yeah, I'm just gonna use it the same way while you're doing little circles. And um, not adding huge amounts of pressure because I don't want to go through. But actually, I can use it pretty much like just normal sandpaper. That gives me a really nice, consistent finish all around. And because it's kind of um, soft in a way, it doesn't break my edges. So I can actually get those done at the same time. Again, I wouldn't, if you use this, I wouldn't use huge amounts of pressure just to be on the safe side. Man, I hope that um, I have managed to take away whatever was on the back. And I think it's just kind of imprinted itself in the previous clear coat layer, but it will be seen when I put on some more. If it shows up, I need to go back and really sand down a good bit more. But uh, that has now given me a very nice, even, very nice even surface to work with. And there's no residue left over. So that is a nice plus, much less cleanup. And yeah, uh, to kind of go over what happened there on the back, this surface that I'm working on, but I'm guessing that there was some moisture left on it when I put the dry surface or the surface of the guitar on it, it stuck to it. So, yeah, bit of a pain, but not a mistake that I'm going to do again. Either I'm gonna have something in between or I am gonna make sure that uh, this is completely dry before I do anything or put anything on it. I should get myself a better better surface to work on or renew the shower mat. All right. So this should give me a very good sort of surface to apply the next layers of um, clear coat. It should grab onto this very well. The Marlon Total, um, these pads, they're literally meant for exactly this. They're meant for finishing and uh, preparing, preparing layers or preparing surfaces in between layers of paint. So nice that I remembered that I had this stuff because it is proving to be very useful indeed. It's not as aggressive as sandpaper and it kind of forms around the surfaces. So if you do have little dips and divots, this will just dig into those or accentuate those. Make sure that when you're doing this, you already have a flat surface to work with. There, that's the body done. Now the same for the neck. This is somewhat easier because I can just go straight up and down the neck like this. Now the process of putting on the mat clear coat does not change. It is the exact same process as putting on the satin or putting on the paint. That doesn't change, but I'm gonna show you 
the first layer and application anyway, just because I can. And just so that you can see how it goes on. It is the Maston, especially the Maston matte clear coat or matte varnish as they call it. It's a bit thinner than the satin or definitely the gloss. So it helps with applying very thin coats over and over because it doesn't build up quite the same way. That's not to say that it's, you know, not res resilient in use because it is. It does harden just the same way. It's just not as thick of a coating when you're putting it on. So yeah, let's go spray some stuff. And then I'm gonna come back in about 20 minutes and do the next layer. And then we're gonna do, uh, we'll see, three or four layers and see how it looks after that. All right, so I am actually pretty satisfied with how the finish came out. And uh, it is time to start putting this together. So first things first, I'm gonna remove this handle because we don't need that anymore. One of the first things that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the wiring before I put this thing together or piece it back with the neck just because I kinda of wanna get that underway. All right, so these are my wires for the output, don't actually need to clip those. Already at this point, it's good to kind of like get your bearings. So that's my bridge ground. That's my live or my hot, and that's my ground. So essentially what I want to do is this. So this goes here. The bridge pick up ground. And then the neck pick up ground, like so. I, I can arrange those however I like. I don't have a positive and negative on this, so I'm guessing that it doesn't make too much of a difference. Do I have white? So I can keep the color code the same. Um, if you can, always aim to keep a certain color code to your wires. It does help out a hell of a lot when doing things. Um, I could technically use this. There we are. So that's the kill switch. Um, I'm gonna put these in the right place as well. Oh, I got one washer on the wrong side there. This large one is supposed to be on the other side. make this look a little bit nicer. Um, finding the 
bridge ground, which is right here, pulling that through so it's not in the way. That's more than enough. Try to avoid overlapping things as much as possible. As if wiring repairs need to be made or customization or something like that, then going back in and trying to decipher where the wires go is somewhat of a hassle. So instead, make just make sure everything's nicely tucked in and stable, not chattering around all that much. Let's put things in place. So putting in the uh, ferrules should be fairly easy. A couple of taps should do the trick pretty well. They weren't in there too tight to begin with. Okay. We can put in the back plates because we've checked the electronics. <laughs> electronics do work, so now we can put these in place. This looks pretty damn cool. I'm not usually uh, that big a fan of just plain black guitars, but there's something about a matte black finished guitar with black hardware, that's just sexy. If only the barrel jack were black, that would add a whole new level, because I mean, imagine if that was black, that would be, that would be cool. All right, um, and the momentary switch could also be black, that would be nice. That's the guitar body done. Um, actually, no. Almost forgot the strap buttons. That is the guitar body done. And let me just say that uh, full on matte black, black hardware, black pickups. That looks absolutely killer. All right, um, now we're gonna move on to the neck to reveal the glossy headstock that we never did anything to. We kept as is. Has a little bit of glue that we need to clean up from the uh, masking tape. But the uh, Diodario finish cleaner will get that done very nicely. There we go. So. Removing the tape from the fretboard. And now we have a little bit of a hard edge where the uh, paint that we just put on and the clear coat that we just put on meets the edge of what we had masked off. So I'm gonna take some 800 grit and just ever so slightly take away that burr. It only needs a couple of good swipes right along the edge. And we're good. Yep. And then for the side of the fretboard, I'm gonna use my finger and just go along the edge of the fingerboard and that's gonna round over that little burr. Now, let's polish up these frets. So I'm gonna use the Crimson Guitars fret, fret polishing rubbers, and I'm just gonna go through all the frets 
on each of the grits. It's a fairly tedious process. Um, I'm not going to film the whole lot. You've seen me do this a thousand times before, and um, I'm just going to get to it. Now I've already done the very coarse, I'm going to move on to the coarse, then the medium, then the fine, and then finally the super fine. Okay, now before I attach the nut back here, um, there's quite a lot of glue. So I'm going to try and get rid of all that before I put the nut in place. Now they've used a lot of glue. Usually you only need just a couple of drops, but this is this has really been glued down a lot. Completely unnecessary. Basically, you only need a couple of drops, mainly for the sake of the fact that the strings hold the nut in place, for the most part. The string tension, at least. Um, the only thing the glue does is it prevents the nut from moving side to side. The nut itself also has a good bit of glue on it. No surprises there. That's easily just fixed with the back of your scalpel. The nut itself wasn't really fitted for this all that well. It hangs over on this side. See? That's not cool. I might fix that. <sighs> there. That's already much better. Now, now that we're gonna put this in place, we're only gonna use a couple of drops of super glue. One there, and one there. And that's it. That's all we're going to use. And I'm lining it up with the sides of the fretboard. Oh, okay. I've never actually checked out how these work. These uh, Ibanez truss rod cavity covers. So, interesting. Yeah, let's put that in place while we wait, or while we're here. There you go. That ties in rather nicely. Then, putting in the tuners, it has come time to um, first clean that off. It has come time to join the neck with the body. So, Absolute first things first. Remember there was that little piece of uh, sandpaper there as a sort of shim. Put that in place. And now there's two sets of screws. Ones that are a little bit more, a uh, little shorter and ones that are a little longer. So of course, naturally, putting in the short screws closer to the end of the heel joint there and the longer screws at the back of the neck pocket. Okay. I think we're ready to string this up, don't you? <laughs> putting in strings, we're gonna be using Diodario NYXL strings. I freaking love these because they're usually equal tension. And in general, I've found that they just last so much longer. Granted, this time around I was provided the strings, but uh, 
If I would have my choice, I would use the NYXLs. I have grown to like them very, very much in the past few years. Now, I'm well aware that these strings are gonna change fairly soon. Uh, Johnny had also said that these are not as big of a gauge as he would want them to be, because they didn't have the bigger gauge, but they will suit the guitar for the time being. So at first I'm just gonna pull all the strings through because it is a through body. This is definitely easier to pull all of them through first with a good bit of tension on the string. A couple of wraps on the high E, I usually do three. Then I push the string down or the windings down pull the string through, and then start winding. At this point, I usually tighten it around, or keep it tensioned up, pressing down ever so slightly to make sure that the wrap goes underneath, so that pushes everything up, which locks the string in place. All right, and that is that. So I'm gonna clean up everything and then we're gonna do the wrap up. One of the key things whenever you're doing work is to kind of, or I found a good work ethic to have is clean up as you go. So you don't clutter up your entire bench with all kinds of tools that you're no longer using in the processes that you have coming up. So you can really focus on the work, find your tools a hell of a lot quicker, and in general just, you know, not faff about, so to speak. All right, so Basically the thing that we need to do now is, well, tune it up, intonate it, and um, see how it sounds. So, get me a trusty tuner. So, stretching out the strings a little bit. Okay, so that is actually A good bit off. And that is way off. All right, so I'm gonna bring this back. All right, let us hear what this sounds like. So I'm gonna boost up my audio here. Future Chug Machine. Archetype Nolly from Neural DSP. So that works, volume works. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. Okay, well it works. So that's nice. <laughs> I'm 
gonna do the wrap up now. Um, this is now fully painted, the fretboard is ebonized, and it looks very different to what we started off with. And I am actually very happy with the results. This thing is mean looking. It is very stealthy and definitely looks the part. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to see more videos in the future. Hit like to really help out the channel and the video. One thing that helps out even more is by hitting that bell icon. It gives you notifications when I put out new stuff and uh, have premieres and live shows and everything like that. So please do support the channel, hit that bell. It does do wonders. And uh, comment down below and let me know what you think of uh, this tutorial and if there's anything I missed or anything that you would want me to look at in the future. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. So next week.